coming up on the Sporting Chef. Welcome to the Sporting Chef show today. I'm cooking grouper. But that's not all. Also on the show today, I've got Susie Jimenez, Stacy Harris, Brad Fenson, C Dub, and Buddy. On my side of the country, we don't see a lot of grouper. Um, I spent a lot of time in the southeastern U.S., and grouper is a big deal there. It's semi-firm, uh, white, really, really mild fish. It's really versatile. You can grill it, poach it, don't care. You can do anything with grouper. The grouper I got today is from Catalina Offshore Products. I get this from Tommy Gomes. Tommy Gomes is a regular on the show. He is by far America's best fishmonger. If there's a better one out there, I haven't met him yet. Tommy knows everything about fish. He sent me this pink baqueta grouper, which comes out of the Sea of Cortez. Now, this was about an eight to 10 pound fish that I filleted both sides of, a big, cool fish. And you know, the thing about grouper is you've got the Goliath grouper that can be four or 500 pounds I just read on the news somewhere where a Goliath grouper ate a shark. So they call them the garbage disposals of the sea because they can eat it all. The smaller groupers, you know, eight to 10 pound, like this, uh, like the pink paquetta grouper, great eating size. I'm gonna make, start off with making Fred's fish sandwich. And you can find this recipe on the sportingchef.com website. This comes to me from Fred Contori, uh, Contawi, rhymes with Maui. Uh, Fred and I used to fish a lot. Fred, I don't know what happened to you. You did the FLW thing and now you're, you know, I see you on Facebook. Very, very simple. I've got some flour and I've got some, you can either use garlic, pepper, and salt or use the High Mountain garlic pepper rub. And I mix that liberally with this flour and just give it a good mix in there because a lot of the seasoning falls off. So. Um, if you're worried about putting, say, too much salt in your, in your flour when you're dusting it, I'm going to heat this up. Let's see. So I've got grouper behind me here. This is that pink paquetta grouper. I'm just going to dust it in here. And the first thing I'm going to make is this really good sandwich. It's got tomato, Ortega, chili, all sorts of cool stuff. Cheese melted on top. But first, I want you to check out my good buddy, Susie Jimenez. So some of the biggest things that I try to show you guys is how to make one paper meals, right? You don't have to clean anything up. So we're gonna do a little thing called the fish in the back. Parchment paper is all you need for this. And we're gonna layer with whatever you have in that fridge. I'm sure you can open it up. You'll have leftover rice, maybe some potatoes, whatever you have, we're gonna use. So I have a little bit of Spanish rice left over from last night. I'm gonna put that right at the bottom. Some bell peppers zucchini, and then some awesome halibut. The halibut's just gonna be cut nice and thin, and you're gonna put it right on top. This is not gonna take that long, so when you're ready to put this in the oven, remember that within 10 minutes, this is ready to go. You can do it the night before as well. And you need a little tang, so we're gonna do little lime, you guys can do lemon, oranges, but I'm gonna do lime, and then rosemary. Again, with herbs, you can use parsley, basil, time, anything you want. Now the biggest trick to this is to make sure that it all steams. The last part to this fish in the bag is to add a little olive oil, but you can also do butter. So we're gonna fold the parchment paper in half, seal one end, and then just start folding it over. So we're gonna put the parchment right on a sheet pan, and I'm gonna go pop this in the oven. And I'm gonna do it at 400 degrees because I want this to zap really quick. So the vegetables are still al dente, the halibut cooks really fast. You can incorporate all the good flavors super quick. I'll be right back. So once you guys pull this out of the oven, 
So you're gonna go ahead and open it right in front of your guests so they can get that aromatic flavor. Oh my God, you're gonna love it. You can sprinkle a little chili flake on there, a little more lemon juice, but guess what guys? You don't even have to do dishes after this. So you guys create your own fish in the bag. We'll see you guys next time. You know, the person you see on TV, the Susie Jimenez you see on TV, is exactly the same person that you see in person. She's funny, she's really, really talented in the kitchen, and if you're in the Aspen, Carbondale, Colorado area, you need to look her up because she does a lot of personal chef and catering stuff there also. Okay, um, one of the things that I like to do is I'm going to season the fish as well as the flour because, as I mentioned, most of the stuff on the flour falls off. So you season the fish, then you just give it a light dusting, um, this is not a real heavily breaded piece of fish here. I'll do a couple of them while I'm here. Pan fried, deep fried, and stir fried grouper all ahead. Plus, Stacy Harris, Brad Fenson, C Dub, and Buddy right here. Welcome back to the Sporting Chef Show. I'm Scott Laysath, and today I'm cooking grouper from Catalina Offshore Products, specifically a pink baqueta grouper. Dusted the fish. I'm gonna put it skin side down. I wanna get that skin crispy. And I like to leave the skin on my fish, whether it's fried or not fried, because I like the texture. I like that crispy skin. This is just gonna take a couple minutes. The mayo part is gonna be, oddly enough, mayonnaise, uh, lemon juice, a little Tabasco. My bun is toasting right now. The fish is done. Pat it dry on some paper towels, skin side down, red onion, tomato, roasted Anaheim. You can just use the Ortega type. Some kind of cheese, pepper jack or whatever. This is gonna go into the oven just long enough to melt the cheese. All right, so after a couple of minutes, the cheese is melted. I've got my spicy mayo <clears throat> on the bun with a little lettuce. Dish number one, Fred's fried fish, kind of fried fish sandwich, that's pan fried. I've also got deep fried and stir fried coming up. But first, I want you to check out Stacy Harris, who, by the way, I have a couple of notable friends who say, we'd sure like to see a lot more of Stacy Harris and a lot less of you. I'm making bacon jam today, and it is one of those southern staples that you just have to have. The power has gone off today, and we've had a little trouble, but so my kitchen may look a little bit different than it normally does. We're running off of all batteries. It's pretty interesting. I have a propane stove, so we're, we're coming right along. But anyway, what I've done is I have rendered the bacon fat from several pieces of bacon. I have this recipe on my website at stacylynnharris.com. So I cut my bacon into tiny little pieces, and now I am just sauteing the onions in the bacon grease. So I've let this go, and it's gotten all caramelized. All these onions are crazy caramelized. I can taste the sugars in them now. And what I'm gonna do is add more sugar to the onions. So I'm adding some um, brown sugar, whole grain mustard. You can add vodka or bourbon, this is bourbon. So I'm adding a little bourbon to the mix. Okay, I'm gonna let that evaporate out just a little. And apple cider vinegar. So I'm putting that right down in here. And then I'm gonna add the bacon right back to the mix. I'm gonna let this simmer for about 20 minutes and you can keep it in the refrigerator for up to three weeks if you put it in little jars or you can let it simmer and simmer and make boar burgers. Next up is grouper tempura. It's gonna have, it's kind of a wet batter as opposed to a dry batter. First thing you do is you take the dry ingredients and mix them together. I've got all purpose flour, corn starch, and that's kind of equal parts there. I've got some baking powder. I've got some baking soda. I've got a little sugar and just a pinch of salt. And you mix that up. Then you get an egg. 
lightly beaten and you add cold ice, ice cold water. Mix that with the dry stuff. On the fish I'm going to season it with some of the high mountain salmon rub. I've got a hot Weston fryer over here into the hot oil. I've also got some vegetables. I've got cauliflower. I've got some heirloom carrots here. I'm going to make a little sauce to go with it. This is a honey mustard sauce. All right, honey mayonnaise yellow mustard. Just the plain old yellow mustard. I've got a little kosher salt, fresh cracked black pepper, a little Worcestershire. Give that a stir. Honey mustard sauce. Take them out. Let them drain for a minute or two while you clean up your mess. Let's take a look. I want to just dry them off on some paper towels. There's a little cauliflower, some carrot, then a green onion. Dish number two, tempura fried grouper honey mustard dipping sauce. And now here's Brad Fenson. Hello, today we're going to bring you some whitetail bits and pieces. We're here in deer camp in Montana hunting with Overly Outfitting and we had a beautiful young whitetail doe that we've used as camp meat and of course we've eaten all the prime cuts, the back straps, the tenderloins, the nice steaks and all the rest of it and what we have left is a bunch of shanks and there's some front shoulders and even the blades and what we're going to do is we're going to braise it down and make it super tender and delicious. And this is actually gonna be one of our best whitetail meals of the week. The only thing that I deboned was uh, the back shanks. And the only reason I did that is because we have a Camp Chef Dutch oven and I wouldn't have enough room for it all if I left the bones in. But you have a look at these, this meat. When it's nicely browned up like this, it adds an incredible amount of flavor when you braise these down and put them in a cast iron pot. And when it's browned, we're just gonna put them right in our Dutch oven, look at that, beautiful. We're gonna take these out right away, but we're just gonna add some vegetables for flavor. Mid-layer here, we got some red onion, pearl onions work well, some celery, some whole garlic. We're just gonna get those in here. We'll save some to the top. Nicely ground up, perfect. And what we're gonna do is right away while our pan's hot, we're gonna deglaze it with some red wine. And there we have the start of our braising liquid and we're going to put this right over top of our meat. We we'll have the rest of our vegetables. A can of diced tomatoes here. The acid in the tomatoes really works well to help break all of this down. Some fresh rosemary always goes well, but we're in deer camp, so we have dried rosemary. We've got some mushrooms as well. We'll put it in with the liquid. You watch the liquid levels. You want to have this almost swimming about two-thirds or three-quarters of the way up, I'm going to add a little bit more red wine. And the other thing I often add to bring up the moisture level is just some beef broth. Of course, we have the lid we're going to put on here. It seals nice and tight. And this is going out to the stove. Look at that. We're going to bring it up to a simmer and then just turn it down and let it start to cook real low and slow for the afternoon while we're out finding another big buck. One more grouper recipe, C-Dub and Buddy are on deck. Remain seated unless you're thinking about getting a glass of Freak Show. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Sporting Chef. I'm Scott Laysef cooking some pink baquetta grouper from uh, Catalina Offshore Products. They got it from the Sea of Cortez. Stir fry. So we've got the the pan fried, the deep fried, now the stir fried. I've got honey, soy sauce, rice vinegar, cornstarch, orange zest, and lime juice. And I'm going to mix that up. This is one of my favorite olive oil. This is from the Lodge in Glen Ellen. Got some olive oil in here. I'm going to season it with garlic and fresh ginger. This is fresh ginger. Don't be confused and think that it's okay to use powdered ginger. That doesn't work. All right, before I burn everything here, I'm going to add the fish. 
And I put the fish in kind of big chunks because it does tend to break up as you cook it. Snow peas, red bell pepper, and keep it moving. The whole concept here with the stir fry is of course to stir fry it, to keep it moving the whole time. You want to make sure that you have all your ingredients ready to go. I'm going to add a little bit more oil in here. So you notice I haven't salted the fish. Um, I've got the soy sauce in the sauce here in that little marinade that I'm going to add that's going to finish in the pan here. I've got some green onions, some hot peppers. I'm using a serrano pepper. You can use jalapeno, habanero, whatever your digestive tract can handle. That's good for now. I'm going to keep this moving. And while this will continue to cook, I want you to check out C-Dub, my buddy from Idaho. Just about everybody I know likes chicken fried steak. And so we took some uh, little medallions off an eye around off a of cow elk and we ran them through the cuber. And then to get my cube steak to fry fairly quick, I then went and hit it with the meat mallet just a little bit. I wanted to thin out so my meat gets cooked all the way through. Okay, we just want to season our meat. And this is about the best way to eat eye of round off an elk. Just chicken fry them. And of course, we could make some gravy. Okay, in the first step, our meat goes into the flour. And then we're going to go into our sourdough batter, into a hot skillet. And as thin as I've got my meat, they're going to cook fairly quickly. Great for breakfast or dinner. We're just going to drain these on a, a paper towel. One of my favorite things to do with this old wood cook stove is to cook for family and friends. So this afternoon we made up a batch of chicken fried elk steak with our sourdough batter. We call them sourdough chicken fried elk steaks. All right, since this is an orange honey stir fried fish, first of all, I'm going to put some more of that sauce back in there. That'll help thicken it up. A little more soy sauce. Here is some bean sprouts and some udon noodles. Give this a stir. A little more sauce, some noodles, fish, snow peas, more fish. I've got some orange segments here that I'm going to pretty it up with. I'll clean up this mess a little bit and while I do that, let's see what Buddy's cooking. We know for sure it's not something you probably cook yourself. The other day I was walking with a wife in a grocery store. We saw some of this Hatch green chili enchilada sauce. We was at the fish camp and I started putting chicken in there and fish and whatnot. Now we have some Mexican squash called calabasa. And you can use zucchini if you want. I also cut up some celery and yellow bell pepper. Now I'm going to put this catfish in there. What you want to do is make sure you, whatever kind of fish you use, that you squeeze all the water out of it real good. I'm going to cook this on the stove top for a while. You always got busted up chips for your dip. Well, I'm going to end up putting those chips on top of this and baking it. She's baked to perfection. The only thing that I added to that canned sauce was some lime juice and now I put some of this high mountain seasoning, chili seasoning on top of it. You serve this with some avocado and tomato or whatever you want. Scott is brand new. I don't think anybody ever done it before, so I'm naming it after you. In just a minute or two, I'm going to show you how to make these dishes look good on a plate and I'll drink some wine. Welcome back to Sporting Chef. This is what this food looks like um, when it's on a plate. I've got over here the tempura style grouper, little vegetables in there also. Fred Kentawi's fish sandwich with the cheese and the Ortega chili. Here's my stir fry. 
You know, if you don't happen to have any grouper around, this works great with halibut. Special thanks today for all the people that helped me on the show, starting with Susie Jimenez. Then there's Stacy Harris, show cookbook, Stacy Harris. Of course, there was C Dub. C Dub's got cookbooks too. Brad Fenson is a prolific writer. We've got Buddy, as always. I've got a glass of wine, and we can't be here without our sponsors, especially Camp Chef. We weren't able to show off a lot of Camp Chef today other than their cast iron cookware, but my outside kitchen is all Camp Chef all the time. I've got Weston, thanks for the great fryer so I could make my tempura batter, make my tempura fish. I cook with High Mountain all the time. That's what's in my pantry. Orion Coolers, game saver. If your game doesn't taste good, if your fish smells bad, there's an excellent chance that you did not preserve it in a game saver vacuum sealing system. And of course, Michael David Wines, which I'm about to drink right now. I'm Scott Laysap, the sporting chef, and I will see you next time. <laughs>